What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to configure your Modern Warfare configuration for your PC so that it runs as best it possibly can. I'll also give you some tips along the way on how to optimize for heating and other things like that. So let's go ahead and jump into Modern Warfare and take a look at some of the options we have available. So the important things you're gonna to wanna to know um, are your screen resolution and your screen's refresh rate. Those two are really important for um, all the settings that we're going to be putting in um, moving forward to make sure that we're optimizing for the system and hardware that we have set up. Uh, for example, it doesn't make much sense to run um, a game at 144 frames a second if your screen can only display 60 at a time. Um, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and go to graphics and take a look at some of these settings here. Thankfully, World of, I mean World of Warcraft, <laughs> Modern Warfare has a great um, explanation of each one on the right side. But I'll go over this just to make it a little bit easier in, in real world usage to see um, whether we should adjust these or not. So for display mode, we have windowed, full screen, full screen borderless, and full screen extended window. Um, the main thing, differences between these is this is going to be full screen and um, you're not going to be able to move your mouse out of the screen window. Um, what I tend to enjoy using um, is full screen extended or full screen borderless. That way I can actually move my mouse off of the screen. Um, if I'm streaming, if I'm chatting, if I'm um, listening to music, I can quickly jump off of the screen, go do what I need to edit, and then move back. Um, when you're in game, it's not gonna let you move your mouse outside of the window anyway. So it's um, kind of nice to have it set up like that. Um, some graphics cards also run um, the game natively at full screen, but most new ones won't have a performance difference um, when doing that. Next up is our um, display monitor. For example, if we're on full screen, we can choose which display we're gonna have our window on. So I have it on my number one display, but I have two available and I could switch them whenever I'd like. Um, our screen's refresh rate is important to know. So mine is 60. That means that our screen only refreshes 60 times per second. So it doesn't make sense to have our frames um, any higher than 60. And that's why you'll see mine capped at 62 up there. But let's go ahead and move on from that. Um, our render resolution. This is important. 100 it means it's at 100% resolution. You can actually scale this up and um, display at, say, 4K if you wanted to even though it's a 1080p display. You're not gonna see it in 4K, but the extra rendered pixels will sometimes make the graphic look better um, as you're looking at it because it's you know, rendered at a larger size and then scaled down. Next up is the aspect ratio, which is important if you're using multiple screens. You can set it up to be a really wide, up to 32 by nine aspect ratio or you can just set it to automatic to um, adjust to your display. I use it as automatic, which is 16 by nine. Um, but if I had, you know, a multi-display setup that I was using in Warfare for some reason, I could do that. Or if I had a really wide display, like a, one of those curved monitors, I could use this there. Uh, V-Sync will limit the frame rate to match your monitor's refresh rate, which you would think is a good thing, but it's actually kind of, not in my experience vsync tends to slow down um and make games feel sluggish so i actually disable this and instead set up a custom frame rate so um because my screen can only do um 60 frames a second i have all of my frames per second caps at 62 frames per second so it's always going to create just an enough frames to cover those 60 frames a second and i feel like it runs really really smooth on a 60 hertz monitor if you have a 120 hertz monitor you can set this to 120 um, and keep it there and it will work perfectly for 120 without using any unnecessary overhead um, why do we worry about overhead basically because if we're rendering unnecessary frames our graphics card is heating up and if it's hot then it tends to glitch or lag or um, drop frames here and there. Even if you're getting 144 frames a second um, or 200 frames a second, 
if your graphics card overheats, you're going to get lag regardless. So it's always good not to overtax your graphics card or your CPU while you're playing the game. And um, this will keep your temperatures down uh, where they need to be. And then um, for display gamma, we have 2.2 and 2.4. Um, this sRGB 2.2 is used for um, TVs. Um, the 2.4 is more for monitors um, and standard definition screens, as it shows on the right. Um, the sRGB can be used on either one, but if you're on a monitor, I switch to uh, 2.4. Now, texture resolution. This is how good the textures look in your game. This is what's going to make it look like a modern game as opposed to an older game on an older system. The problem is the more... Um, resolution you give to the textures the more graphics memory and vram it's going to take up so my graphics card supports eight gigs of vram so i'm able to turn this up on high and it still doesn't um uh, go over the max here which is a recommended um probably about 6k or six gigs um but if you're noticing that this is going over max a really easy way to um, gain some frame rate and um, optimize vram usage is just to drop it to normal or maybe even low you'll see how um, massively it affects our vram needs um, just by dropping that down a little bit it does affect the quality of the game um but at those speeds, you're not going to notice textures up close too often anyway. So um, I, I leave that to your discretion. Uh, anastrophic filtering is when you look at something from an angle. Uh, for example, this texture is at an angle, so it looks kind of blurred. This one um, is really cleaned up and looks really nice. So if you don't mind some blurry floors here and there, just like if you don't mind the texture resolution being a little lower, you can drop this down to gain some frame rate, um, or you can raise it up to get better quality. Uh, so for particle quality, it's just as it looks. If, if All these particles happen very, very quickly. So you can turn this down and not really notice a difference. If you're recording, maybe you want to leave it up. Um, I record in stream, so I like to have everything maxed out. But um, you know, if you want to gain those extra frames, this isn't something you're going to notice too often. Uh, bullet impacts and sprays is how many um, draw counts you can have bullets. So if you have it on low, uh, you might not see any sprays or bullets on the surface. If you have it on high, you'll see all of the bullet hits um, on the surface. It's not super important. You still see the impact um, when it happens and it shows that you missed. You just won't see the texture um, printed on it. I don't feel like this really takes up too much resources, so I always leave this on. Uh, tessellation is the amount of geometry in the scene. So you'll notice these two are the same scene, but this one has rocky 3D surfaces. It's the exact same kind of flat mesh, um, but because of the colorations on it and um, the actual tessellation in your, that is made by your graphics card, it's a feature, um, it can make it look 3D. So... This is kind of iffy. This is one of those um, that I would almost recommend turning off for competitive play just because you're not going to see any fake 3D geometry. If you turn this off um, to disabled, everything that you see that's flat is actually flat. So um, some would argue that's better for, um, for aim and realism in tournament situations. Uh, some would argue it looks nicer this way and it doesn't affect the gameplay um, just visually. but you know, that also can be up to your discretion. I don't feel like it um, affects uh, frames per second too much. If if you want to try it on near, that's all right. But I don't feel like it, it really affects things too much. Streaming quality. I get a lot of questions about streaming quality and what this actually is. Is this how your game is streamed to people watching it? Is this how um, your... Uh, I don't know, your game stream to video servers or something. Is Does this help streaming on Twitch? No. Uh, basically what this is, is the quality of the textures and objects based on how far they are from you. So if you have low streaming quality, then things that are further away will look lower quality. Um, like if you're dropping into Warzone, things that are further away will look really, really kind of like blocky and things closer up will look better 
quality. Um, if you have it on normal, then it raises that view distance and things further away start to look better. Now, shadow map resolutions will use a lot of CPU. Um, this is one that you can really gain some VRAM usage and CPU usage and GPU usage by dropping down. Um, and you'll notice that they've made the textures not too different. So this is still a very clear texture of a shadow and you wouldn't really guess that there was an issue. Um, once we see the high quality shadow, we realize that there are some um, missing sunspots between the bars, but it's not really something that you're going to notice to a huge extent. So if you need those extra frames, this is definitely one you can drop down. Um, caching spot shadows and sun shadows is great if you have enough RAM. These two go directly into the computer system memory, not your VRAM. So as long as you have enough RAM, you can cache the shadows and it'll speed up rendering. If you don't have a lot of RAM and you're noticing some glitching or it's not loading as quickly, you can uh, disable this to gain back some of that. But um, it's always a good idea, if possible, to cache the shadows ahead of time so that when you render the frame, it just loads up immediately. Particle lighting will affect your frame rates quite a bit as well. It's not going to affect your RAM usage, but it's going to affect the CPU and GPU usage. Um, if you're noticing some stuttering during um, when grenades go off or C4 goes off, this is something that you'd want to lower um, just to make sure that your PC doesn't run into any hiccups during those uh, intense lighting moments. Uh, ambient occlusion is uh, soft shadows that intersect with each other to add depth. And um, this will only work if you're using anti-aliasing, which we'll get into later. But I prefer using it on um, all objects. But realistically, static objects only would be fine. You don't need to see um, really super nice shadows casting onto characters that are moving right across your screen really quickly. So static objects is a nice way to have it affect the environment, things that aren't moving, and be like, wow, that looks really nice, but not use unnecessary resources when moving objects are around. Screen space reflections, or SSR, is the quality of reflections when looking at um, reflective surfaces. So this can be water, this can be a shiny vehicle, things like that. Um, it's not too necessary. You're not going to notice anything. You're not going to get a special glint of an enemy from a reflection, most likely. But it just affects how nice um, things tend to look on screen. But it definitely does use extra resources. So um, if you need to lower this, uh, it would definitely bring up your frames per second a bit. Um, not necessarily a huge amount, but anything with reflections and lighting are going to tax your CPU and GPU. Now, anti-aliasing and post-processing effects. This is one that I'm really kind of, um, well, I'll, I'll explain my thoughts on each one as I go by. But um, you do need anti-aliasing. You don't want things to look jagged and gross and really weird edges. So anti-aliasing is necessary. It just makes um, things look nicer, especially um, angled lines. Uh, you'll notice these angled lines uh, these ones, they're really jagged, even shadows. And over here, you get the smoothness. And that's kind of what we want. So SMAA 1X, at least. If you want to use um, other effects, you have to go at least into um, SMA 2X or Filmic SMA 2X. Um, these are advanced anti-aliasing techniques that allow the addition of special blur and lighting effects um, to be uh, included in the anti-aliasing. Uh, so I at least recommend SMAA 2X. It's nice. It's, it's a really nice looking filter. I do not recommend Filmic. Filmic adds a lot of unnecessary um, post-processing to the game that takes away from what you're actually seeing. For example, it might add some extra um, grain on the screen or um, a, a darkness around the edges of the screen to make it look like you're like like stunned or something. But I feel like it really just um, takes away from the mechanics and gameplay. It kind of you're like you're not watching a movie; you're experiencing it. Um, so I feel like the filmic strength isn't necessary. I don't really like. Um, 
the blurring and, and things like that in um in the super advanced ones like filmic ones i like being able to see the actual details so i have um filmic strength and filmic off so i just leave sma 2x now depth of field i also leave off um because it basically makes things close to you look blurry so you can focus on other stuff but i would much rather see everything clear I don't want anything to be blurred out by the game and taken out of my view. I want to decide what I'm looking at um, when I'm playing the game. So I leave depth of field off. Now, this also saves us some rendering resources as well. Motion blur as well. I want everything to look really clear and crisp. I do not want motion blur to be um, fake blurring things that don't need to be blurred um, because I want quality and I want to be able to see enemies if I'm moving. Um, weapon motion blur, same thing. I want to be able to see my weapon clear. I don't want anything blurred, so I leave that off. And then film grain, another unnecessary feature. It's it's literally visual noise that makes your game look uglier. <laughs> I, I don't get it. it. It literally adds this white noise on top of your entire game. It's just not not a good not a good look. Um, one other thing to notice is with display gamma, if your display is looking really really bright chances are you're using the wrong one. If it's really bright for some reason, switch this and it'll probably fix your issues. Uh, yeah, so I've been going on for quite some time now. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. And then um, you guys let me know if you have any questions or comments about this. And if you need any help uh, setting up your graphics in Modern Warfare. Thanks again for watching and have a good day. Peace.